gang, I'm back with another 3D cookie project. This time I've got a spin on my previous Halloween cauldrons. I'm gonna do a cookie pot of gold for St. Patrick's Day. In another video, you'll also be seeing a spin on this in the form of an edible teacup. So I'm using a lot of the same basic pieces, but just putting together, putting them together slightly differently to give them a completely different look. So what you'll need for this project are a three inch hemisphere, and I'm gonna show you how to shape that a three inch hemisphere with a cutout, which is gonna form the top part of the pot. We'll be putting them together like so. You'll also need a ring, and I'll have the exact dimensions for this in the video description. These are just cut with standard round cutters and a small ring that fits behind it. I think this is about two and a quarters inches and this is about three inches across. You'll also need some form of cookie to form the base of the pot of gold. I used a shamrock, you could use a round, you could use anything. If you want to elevate it a little bit as I have here, a small little round cookie, this is about an inch to an inch and a half, is a useful support. We may not use that today, we'll see how it looks. I've also got these cool little embossed plaques that say, lucky you, pot of gold and gold on them, and I'm gonna show you how to make these. As an alternative, I've got a few pieces to make a different type of lid completely that are, that are embossed. So you've got a round, an embossed round piece, and an embossed cookie piece that looks like a handle. We've got chocolate rocks on which I've got a fondant pipe with a little bit of smoke, which is a royal icing transfer. I've got a little fondant leprechaun hat. And I've got rainbow candy that I've firmed up with a little fondant inside so it can stand up on top of a lid as another lid option. Okay, so let's talk about how to shape this dome. I've done this in my cauldron video and a few others, so I'm just gonna go through it pretty quickly here. Again, I'm working with my gingerbread. Other doughs that don't spread or crack much could also work. I'm rolling it about an eighth of an inch thick. And you always wanna cut around slightly bigger than what the ultimate diameter of your shaped piece will be. I'm gonna cut in a non-cracked part. And then lift and gently shape it over my dome. Now to make this rimmed piece, it's going to be the top of the pot. I do the same shaping process, exactly the same step, but then I take this cutter, which is, let's measure it. It is about two and a half inches across. And I just gently I make sure it's centered on it. And I just press enough to score around in it. I don't want to cut all the way through. I'm going to bake it in the oven with a just scored like so. When it comes out of the oven, I will cut along that line, pop it off the silicone, and that centerpiece will also pop off. If I cut it all the way through now, what's going to happen in the oven is it'll just slide to the bottom of the dome and it'll become much wider than I want it to be. So you do want to bake with a just scored enough that you can cut through easily when it comes out of the oven, but not all the way through. Okay, let's talk about these little fun little pieces. These are going to be plaques on the sides of the pots. And I'm going to make them in a mode that's similar to how I made those tags on my quivers. Again, rolling out my dough. I'm going to be embossing the dough directly with these fun little snap together letters that I got from Country Kitchen Sweet Art. So it, they have a whole alphabet of letters and multiple versions of the letters and I've chosen just gold here. And they snap together and I'm gonna press that into the dough. You wanna press before you cut the shape around it so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't misshape. If you were to cut the plaque shape and then press, your plaque shape would deform. So always imprint with the letters first and then cut the little plaque shape. So there it's flat and you'll notice that mine has a contour to it so that it can fit around the side of the pot. And in order to create that, I bake it. I just lay it over the same hemisphere mold that I'm shaping the pot with, stick that on a cookie sheet in the oven and bake as I normally would. Now I have an optional lid here that's the fancy lid and I wanna to talk to you about how to make those pieces. This is a simple round that's gonna be the bottom of it, no big deal. This is an embossed round, and for that I used a first impressions mold. 
that I'm going to bake directly in. I have a whole other video about how to make embossed cookies. I'm going to refer you off to that. But the advantage to baking in the mold is that the cookie dough will spread a lot less and you'll get a really tremendous imprint like this. If I were to press the dough in, pop it out, and then bake it on my cookie sheet, it would spread a lot more and you wouldn't have that definition. Sometimes midway through the baking process, if it poofs up, I'll take the back side of my spatula and just press it down and that tends to create a nice really crisp imprint as well. Now for this handle, I've made, done it pretty much the same way, but I've made creative use of a mold intended for a different purpose. This is a frame mold, but I thought if I just could isolate one por portion of it, it'd make a really cool fancy handle for my cookie. So with that in mind, same process, I'm just going to pack dough into this end of it, bake it, and then pop it out, and we'll have a handle that's all ready to go. It might need a little bit of trimming up on the ends, but not much. But that looks nicely packed. That would bake, flip out, trim it up, and you'd end up with a handle like so. So the next step is to get my dome pieces looking beautifully coated black like this. And that's done through dipping. It's really hard to pipe on a contoured surface. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So for dipping, I use royal icing of dipping consistency, naturally, which is for every cup of my very thick royal icing glue, I add about two to three tablespoons of water and gently stir it in. So it flows kind of gradually off a spoon like so. And I do like to make this usually about a half an hour at least before I actually dip it so as to let some of the bubbles and the icing subside. For these dome pieces, I submerge them just head on into the icing and you just need to make sure it's in a bowl deep enough that you get nice coverage of the whole piece. Rotate it to the side and then shake, shake, shake to get out any bubbles like that until it's completely smooth. The next step is to set it onto something to drain so you don't get a foot at the bottom. I don't put it directly on the surface because I don't want it I don't want it to foot on it and this looks a little short so I'm going to actually put it on this one. This is a few domes stacked stacked up tall and that just gives it a little more room to drain and I, I want to knock some of this extra icing off either with the side of my paring knife or with the side of my trussing needle and that'll just leave me with a cleaner edge to start, so I'll have to file less once it's dry. So that's basic dipping of the dome. My process on this piece is going to be a little different. My process for dipping here is more of a rotating motion, so I, get a, I feel like I get a cleaner edge on both open cut edges if I rotate it through rather than submerging it head on. So we'll see how that goes. It's more important that this part be smooth than, let's shake it and we'll get that out, than the bottom part because the bottom part's going to be facing down in the end product. Okay, so shake it, shake it, shake it. It's looking pretty good except for that area I messed with. Set it down on here. I'm going to clean my hands and then just clean up the bottom of that piece just as I cleaned up that piece with the side of my trussing needle. That completes the dipping process. While these guys are drying, I'm going to show you how to make some of the fun accessories that go on top like the pipes and smoke and the leprechaun hats and the rainbows. Okay, we're going to start by making these really cute little pipes, little leprechaun pipes. I am going to make the pipe with a little bit of gray fondant and I'm just starting by rolling a taper, kind of a, a, a tapered point at one end and leaving it kind of chubby on the other end. I don't think I need it quite that long. So I'm going to cut off that end and then twist it up into kind of a pipe shape like so. And you could leave it at that, but I want to create a little bowl in the pipe actually, as you can see on some of these others, because I'm going to be fitting in a little bit of royal icing smoke later. So it looked like he was smoking it when he disappeared. So I'm taking my fondant balling tool and just pushing it into the center like so. And that creates a little opening. Okay, so let that set aside to dry. That's the basic shape. And once it's dried, you can come in and detail on it. You'll notice perhaps on this guy that I've added some little black lines and details just to make it look more pipe-like. 
And those are most easily added, of course, after it's dry, because you're going to be applying some pressure. And I am using a fine-tipped rainbow dust marker for this. So I'm going to draw three little lines down at the base. And then one just across the top of it. This you need kind of a steady hand. That's why I'm anchoring the, the pipe with my left hand. And before we put the smoke in it, let me tell you and show you how I made that. So I just start by piping kind of a random form that looks like maybe the shadow or the plume of smoke coming off behind the, the curl of smoke, which are kind of stylized. And I want it narrow enough at one end that it'll actually fit into the pipe when I'm done. And we're just going to put a little black flourish on top. This is a wet on wet technique, so the black should sink and settle into that white a little bit. Now for assembly of them, that's also relatively straightforward. I want to assemble them together like so, so that I can stick that upright on my pot. And to do that, I just take a little bit of thick royal icing glue, just stick a little icing in the middle. I've matched it to the color of my smoke plume, but you could use gray to match the pipe either way. And then I want to prop it up a little bit so it doesn't lean backwards until it dries. So I'm just going to use a little bit of wadded up paper towel. And when that's completely dry, I'll be able to pick it up and it'll look like something like so. Okay, so the first step on my hat is making these tiny little clover embellishments. These are royal icing transfers. They're completely optional, but more is more in my book. I've got some that are already made, as you can see. And once they're completely dry, similarly, they just lift right off. So to pipe the clovers, I'll just do one or two to give you an idea. I've got a relatively thick royal icing that has some body so that the stuff I'm piping doesn't flow into itself. So I push forward, sustain pressure to create a little bead and pull back. And I do that twice to create one side of the shamrock. I'm going to rotate this just because it's easier for me to pipe away from me. And do the same thing on the other side. Push forward, pull back. They're going to meet in the center. This looks like a pretty wide shamrock. I'm going to rotate it one more time and create this center leaves, if you will. And then draw one stem down the center. Again, set those aside to dry. And they'll be, and generally that would be, that's a thick icing, so that might just be a couple of hours before they could lift off. Drawing time is a function of the icing thickness. Okay, onto those hats that I scooted off my cutting board by mistake. Those are made with fondant, and you'll notice that I've got a kind of a two-tone top of the hat, just by using two shades of fondant, that I'm just going to kind of roll together. I'm going to take slightly more dark green and just have a, a light green highlight in it. So I've got a starting point there, which is roughly the shape I want, and I'm going to lay in a thinner strip of the light green. And then just kind of roll that into a gentle taper. I want it kind of tapered at the bottom and wider at the top if I can. So I'm going to roll it a little more heavily down towards the bottom. Doesn't need to be that tall. So I'll cut that off. And then shape it like... Let me give it another little roll. Fatten it out. It's going to be a small hat. And then press it down a little bit to give it a little indentation in the top. That's basically how I made all the tops of these hats of varying sizes. This one's been completely dried, so that now it's easy to work with, and we're going to be attaching it to the brim of the hat. Let's talk about how I made that. So I'm going to roll this to the number three setting on my machine. That's usually the setting I take most fondant pieces to, unless it's something out of the norm. It's just a nice thin, thin but still not so thin that it gets too fragile to handle. And simply cut it out, no big deal. Put the nice face up, and that creates a nice little contour. When it's completely dry, you can slide it out, and your piece will look something like this. And now we're ready to put those pieces together. I'm going to use that same green that was thick that I used for the clovers or the shamrocks as my glue. But before I do that, I am going to give it a little more detail. See how that brim has got some stitching? I did that again with my food marker, just little dots along the edges. 
like so. Really straightforward. They don't need to be perfect. This is a tiny piece. It's about one and a half inches across. I'm going to take this piece I have here because I think it fits rather nicely and just glue that in place. Oops, a little too much glue. It's looking pretty cute as it is. But we're going to add those last details, which are a brown, rather a gray fondant band and that little clover. So we've got to cut that gray band. And for that, once again, we're back to fondant. I want a long strip of this, relatively long. So I'm feeding it in lengthwise as opposed to widthwise, which is I fed it in widthwise when I did that fat piece for the brim. So I start by just cutting a straight line to define one end. OK, I want a little stitching mark, so I'm just going to Put that through the center of this piece. I'm using a tracing wheel, which is a sewing tool, to just emboss a little mark there, which I just think adds a nice little flourish. And then cut along the other side. Now, because this is so fine, I'm just going to stick this down with, rather than with the royal icing glue, I'm going to use a little bit of corn syrup to get that down. I'm just going to simply pinch it, pinch it with my fingers at the back. You could also use your paring knife, but it's simple enough to just pinch it. I can actually stick the clover in without any glue because the fondant is still moist. So my last little flourish on here is just a gold bead. And I just wanted a small opening in my tip so I don't have to apply too much glue. And I'll stick that in place. And there you have a sweet little hat. Next accessory is the rainbow, which is another optional decoration for the lid. As you can see here, it's standing upright. I actually made that with store-bought candy, these little airheads, sour, sweet and sour strips that I think are very colorful and perfect for pots of golds. You'll notice that they're very floppy, though, so they're not at all going to stand up if I just use them as they are. So I've got a little trick here to make them more rigid. I'm basically going to insert a little strip of fondant in between, and then we're going to air dry that over this little setup I have in front of me. So again, rolling out a strip of fondant to number three on my pasta machine. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be hidden. I'm going to put it like so. Stick it down with a little bit of royal icing I'm actually using a relatively loose icing here because I don't want the end piece to be lumpy. If I were using my glue consistency, it would be a little thicker and a little lumpier. I want it to really be flat when it's completely done. So I'm at a loose icing and I'm smearing it till it's completely flat and then just stacking these like so and then pressing them together and then trimming off the white. And then we're just going to drape it over my spatula here that I've got elevated. I'm going to kind of put it at this kind of so so it's not straight up and down. I'm going to kind of put the ends at angles to each other because I think that'll just fill out the top of the lid that much better. OK, so as I said, just to give you evidence, these things actually do dry quite firm once the fondant inside dries and they will be standable. We'll be using that piece later, so let me set it aside. And onto the plaques now. This is how they started. Remember, we embossed that dough, baked them. And you can see the lettering, but it's not super accentuated. So I want to accentuate it so it looks a little bit more like so, so you can really see it. So to do that, I'm actually going to dust the letters with a little bit of dry charcoal petal dust and a dry brush and work it into those grooves. And then we're going to spray, spray the whole thing gold, and that'll hide any dust I get on the top surface, but not spray deep into the recesses there and just highlight those words beautifully. So dusting like so. Went a little heavy on the dust there. I might go a little lighter on this one because they're smaller. And the next step is simply spraying them. For that, I'm using PME gold luster spray. I like this particular spray because it dries really quickly and doesn't pool up as much as some of the others do. I tend to avoid certain brands. This is my preferred one. Just give it a good shake and you want to 
Then set up a spray area, a backdrop, and cover your countertop because this stuff tends to go airborne. I'm going to shake that spray and spray it somewhat of a distance so you don't get a pooling of it on top. These, these, these spray lusters spray rather forcefully. As you'll notice, it flopped one over. You can also airbrush, and that's a lot more controllable, but it also takes an expenditure. If you don't want to buy an airbrush, these sprays work very nicely. So there you see that one done. And you can hold it if you want. I just didn't want to get gold spray on me. So that looks pretty good. And you can still see the highlighting of the words quite nicely. Yet they've got this nice gold color, which is fitting with our pots of gold. Okay, we're ready to put this baby together, starting with the bottom. I've got my dipped and dried pieces. I've also filed them down so they're a really nice fit, and I've marked my front with black lines. So my front of both pieces is here, because I've got the nicest, tightest fit that way. So I'm using black royal icing glue, again, very thick consistency, to glue these pieces together and making sure my lines more or less line up because there's a really nice fit in this particular direction. Now, that seam is obviously very visible and I do want to disguise that. So I am going to be laying a fondant band there, but before I do that, I want to fill in with a little more black just to flatten out that seam. If I were to apply the fondant strip to it as it is, it might lay a little bumpy. So I'm just going to fill that out a little bit. So now once this is suitably dry, usually I allow a half an hour or so, I'm ready to put on the fondant band. And I've got a pre-cut fondant band. It's very similar to what we put on those little leprechaun hats earlier. And I just want to cover the seam with it. Just a little bit of a dab. You don't need a lot. You don't want it sliding around. If I only put it in the center, I get it centered on the pot where I want it. And then I'll gradually work it all the way around, applying corn syrup as I go. Okay, and now once it's in place, I'm going to stick it back on this and elevate it so I can really see how straight that fondant is. And before the fondant's completely dry, I want to take my paring knife and just level it if it's at all crooked. I think that looks pretty good. The other thing I'm checking is to make sure it's flush up against the sides from the top so there are no gaping holes from the top down view. It looks pretty, the ribbon looks pretty straight to me. So while that fondant's still flexible, that's the front view, I want to attach my little plaque. I'm going to use the Lucky U one because I thought it came across the most nicely. The letters are most distinct. I'm just going to attach that with a little bit of black royal icing glue. I'm working with black now so that if I overshoot or have to slide it on here, I can do so and it won't be so obvious because it's going on to black. And then we want to dress it out as I did the one in the front. I have some beads to either side and some little green accents. I'm going to start by placing my, my gold beads. Again, I'm going to stick them into the fondant because they're kind of big and I don't want them sticking out too far. I'm just going to use a little dab of green icing for that because I'm going to be using green dots elsewhere. I don't want too much because I don't want it showing behind the gold. So that completes the front of my pot of gold. So to mount this on the shamrock, I've got a little riser here. This is a cookie. I just sponged it with a little black food coloring. I'm just going to glue that down with the same black royal icing glue. It's going to just give the pot a little more lift. And think about it, you might want the shamrock tail coming towards you, and I think I do. So I think I'm going to make the tail my front. So I have that little bit of interest at the front of my pot. And now I'm going to simply stick the pot on it. To do that, though, rather than just using glue, I like to use a little bit of fondant in between. It gives something, it just gives a little bit of something for that pot to sit into and sink into. We will attach glue both to the bottom and the top of that. And then simply, not a lot of glue, 
maybe a little more than that, and then simply set that in the middle. And I'm going to be looking front to back and also side to side to make sure it's reasonably centered before I push it into the fondant. Because once I do, it's harder to get it oriented correctly. Now, before we were to place the lid on that, I'd let that dry at least an hour until it was really secure. And certainly, maybe even overnight before we load it up with candy. We've got a number of options because I showed you a lot of doodads that could possibly go on top. We've got the rainbow candy option up here in front. We've also got one that has a leprechaun hat and a pipe. And I'm going to just see how much I can combine on the one I'm doing here today. We'll talk a little bit at the end about that more elaborate lid. Uh, just to note, the top pieces, as you recall, started like this with a plain ring and a backing piece. And I simply sprayed them gold and then top coated that with black royal icing and did a little beadwork around the edge. It's now completely dry. And then the bottom piece I just sponged with black food coloring so it would kind of disappear as a false bottom. There's, these are a really close fit and the, that's purposeful because this piece needs to fit into here when it's done. So you'll see I don't have a lot of overlap between the bottom piece and the inner part of this ring. But that's okay, I'm gonna glue it from both the back and also from the inside to make sure it's really secure because the inside will end up being covered with gold, candy gold. So I won't, you won't see anything that I piped there. So I'm gonna reinforce it just to make sure it's really, really glued in there from the inside. And now we are ready to go ahead and fill it. I've got this really fun chocolate rock candy that I got at Candy Warehouse online. It's normally kind of a dull gold color, as you can kind of see on this side. But I've gone ahead and sprayed it with my gold luster spray, the same PME spray we used earlier, and shined it up a little bit. So it's really glossy. So I've got relatively thick icing, kind of of a gold consistency. Actually, this is a little more orange than I would like, but we're going to completely cover it with those rocks so we won't see it. So this would be one rainbow possibility. And I think I am going to try to use it. Just budge it on in there. And you can do these all a little differently as I have. That's kind of the fun of it. Make a party out of it too. You can make the pieces in advance and then have the kids come on over and assemble their own. And they'd all end up a little differently, which is kind of the beauty and fun of it. If I have room for the pipe, maybe in the foreground right here, that might look kind of cute. I think I'm going to stick that down with a little bit, since it's gray and it's going on the edge of the edge of the lid, I'm going to stick it down with a little bit of black. So hopefully it'll be less likely to show than the gold down there. Okay, so we're ready for the final assembly. Everything has dried the requisite amount of time. I've got a number of different lid options here, one with a hat and the pipe, which I think is super cute. Here's that fancy lid option, which I didn't really show you in detail, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit. These were the two embossed pieces. I simply sprayed them gold with a PME spray and then used a little bit of thick gold royal icing to perch the handle upright on that. And it's simply mounted on a black ice cookie that's been wrapped with a little green fondant band. So I'm going to show you how all of these different lids look on this one pot once we get it plated. And to plate it, to keep from sliding around, I like to use a little sugar often on the plate. This is some really cool pearlized gold sugar from CK Products. And this hopefully is now dry enough that I can just bring it over, lift it up like so, kind of stabilize it in the sugar, and fill it up with candy, of course. You can use more of the chocolate rocks or these cool gold M&Ms. They're very, very nice as well. So here we've got lid with hat and pipe is one option. Fancy gold lid if you want to go more sophisticated route for adults coming over for your St. Patty's Day party. Or a rainbow lid that we just finished. Might still be a little wet. So I won't leave it on very long because the bottom might fall out. So that's a wrap on my St. Patty's Day pot of gold. You'll see variations of this project both in my Halloween cauldron 
video and in an upcoming video where I'm doing a project that looks like an actual teacup using very many of the same elements just arranged in different ways. Till that video, live sweetly.